So how do you break down systemic racism in policing? Following recent violent acts against Indigenous people at the hands of RCMP officers, including the killing of Rodney Levi in New Brunswick just last Friday, that's a question that's being put to lawmakers at every level of government. Today, a new report in Montreal made 38 recommendations to fight systemic racism there, including better data, more diverse hiring. But what's so frustrating to many, many people is to keep going over the same ground again and again, go back to square one. Other reports have confirmed this for years, and now we're arriving at the same conclusion and nothing has changed. What needs to happen at a federal level? Let's find out. Joining us now is the leader of the NDP, Jagmeet Singh. Always good to have you back on the program, sir. You are calling for massive change to defeat systemic racism in Canada. You've called out the Prime Minister's lack of action today. Uh, what needs to be done, sir? Well, you touched on it earlier. There's been so many reports that make it abundantly clear what needs to be done. The government just needs to take action. So the Prime Minister could immediately ban, prohibit expressly in legislation and in policy, racial profiling, streetcars, or carding. But has happened in Toronto, though the Charter says it's not allowed, it still happens, and it can be expressly, politically, in terms of policy and in legislation, banned. That's one thing. We can ensure that there's a review of use of force and de-escalation to ensure that police are not using force unnecessarily. And there's also a lot of people, Black Lives Matter as a movement is calling for defunding the police. What they're saying is we need to take a different look at how we're spending money, and is it appropriate for a police officer to respond to a wellness check or a mental health check, or should it be instead a mental health worker or a health worker responding that may be supported by others? But we need to take a look at how we're spending money and do what Halifax has done, which is instead of buying a tank, which they had initially slated to buy, they pulled that back and then put the money into anti-racism initiatives. Uh, Mr. Singh, you know that the RCMP, of course, is federal jurisdiction, but other police forces are the jurisdiction of premiers, mayors, municipalities. Uh, they may say, we don't want the federal government encroaching on our jurisdiction. What would you say to them? Well, I'd say let's start with the federal government. And I'm calling for specific, clear legislative and policy changes at the federal level. Hopefully, that'll provide, provide some leadership, starting with expressly prohibiting racial profiling, continuing with use of force and de-escalation, making sure that those are priorities, also looking at how we spend our money and making sure that we have the right people responding, healthcare workers, mental health workers. In New Brunswick alone, two Indigenous people were killed by the RCMP. One, uh, Chantal Moore, had it was a wellness check. and The wellness check resulted in her dying. Yeah. That should never happen. And there's things that we can do about it. Mr. Singh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out the practicality. I've asked a number of people. Uh, almost everyone has, has asked for better data, right? We need to find out what's going on. Uh, how can you ensure that, let's say we do create, uh, collect what's called race-based data. How will you ensure that that same data is then not used uh, for profiling slash carding purposes? So what's being asked for is actually something we can get the RCMP to release right now. When we talk about use of force, all the interactions that the police have with the public are recorded in some way. We can actually get the RCMP to release that data right now. How many times has use of force been used with Indigenous people, with racialized people, with Black people? And what happened in Toronto was the data showed that people uh, of racialized background, so Black, Indigenous, and others, were stopped far more disproportionately than anyone else, having committed no crimes, having having been a subject of no specific investigation just because they were deemed to be suspicious and there was right. absolutely no charges laid. That's an example of the evidence helping to build a policy. Similarly, when we know that there is uh, data out there, we can track it better and we can have the government or require the RCP to release it to show that when there's encounters with the police, how often is use of force, how often is it used and how often is it with Indigenous or racialized people. These are the types of things that can help us make better decisions. When earlier this week, the commissioner of the RCMP, Brenda Lucky, refused to say, she said there is no systemic racism in the RCMP. She said it in multiple interviews. She said she didn't even know what it meant. She said there may be unconscious bias. Then the, the uh, video, the dash cam video of, of uh, Chief Alan Adam, the Chippewa chief who was uh, taken down by two police officers in a very controversial use of force, and we, he's been on this program. Suddenly, she shifted. Now, Senator Lillian Dick is calling for her to step down because she denied there was systemic racism. 
Should she step down? Do you trust her to lead transformation in the RCMP? Well, first off, I got to say it is deeply troubling that the chief commissioner or the commissioner of the RCMP wouldn't be able to say what race systemic racism is. That is troubling. But for me, the bigger problem is we can change the commissioner, but it doesn't change the fact that it's the government, the liberal government in this case, and Prime Minister Trudeau, who are the final say when it comes to policies. If the government is not willing to review the use of force or de-escalation or legislate an end racial profiling, then it doesn't matter who the commissioner is if the government isn't willing to do the, the things that need to be done. So I really believe that the accountability has to be at the highest level, at the prime minister and the liberal government. That's where we're going to see the systemic change we need. All right, just before I let you go, I want to touch on the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. There's a crucial vote coming up this week. You said your government, uh, your party, uh, would not back the supplementary estimates, which is uh, a, a very critical matter, if the government does not extend the serve. Well, today the prime minister said we will extend it, but the details are to come. Are you on board? Is there anything specific you need to see? Well, I, I made it clear for a number of weeks now that people are worried about not having support, that they can't go back to work and their serve is ending and they don't know how they're going to pay for their bills or buy food. Uh, so that, to me, is really important. And now hearing the prime minister announce more clearly a plan, that, to me, gives me some more confidence. But I want to wait and see what the details are of that plan. I really want a, a clear plan that's going to ensure that families who are worried and afraid that they're going to lose the serve and not have any ways to make ends meet, they need to know that there is help coming. And I want to know that that is a concrete plan. All right, yeah, well, we're all waiting to see those details, and we'll talk about the cost coming up when the Parliamentary Budget Officer joins us in just a few minutes. Mr. Singh, I always appreciate hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.